Good morning, family and friends, and welcome to the Woke Nation. Also, to this new day, our day, our great day. Of course, it is ours, and we have to enjoy each day because it's ours. Okay, don't let anyone mislead you again. Especially you, the woke nation, you know, you used to be in religion or in spirituality and they, you're bamboozing you with all that bullshit. If you do this, this, if you do that, all that, don't do this, don't do that. You know, making life unbearable to you. So, I want to share with us and I will encourage you to join me whatever idea you have about what, I, what I'm talking about. Please feel free to, to share it with us on the comment um, box. So that's how we share knowledge. I want to learn from you just as you also want to learn from me. We are in this together and we ought to grow in this knowledge together knowledge of factual truth. I titled this Our Land and Our Life, Our Land and Our Life. As a people, Africans, we don't have our land anymore. We don't have our life anymore. Although we are living in our land and claiming to have our life, but we don't really have them. Because the invaders and the demons, which are commissionaries, they succeeded in you know, taking control of our land and our life. And uh, I will use some portions of their book, or book to show us, try to open the eyes of those who are still doubting what people like myself are saying. I mean, the woke people. So our land and our life. As you know, you know, this is what we know as our land, like the map of Africa. This is where you see other Africa is not true. The map of Africa is the whole world. Before wicked men cut out this and begin to divide us. As I said in the previous video, the Africans, let me, let's say I am now saying I am from West Africa. The Africans living in the East Africa, South Africa or North Africa, they are not my neighbors. They are not my friends. They are my family. We are one. Africa originally are one before the demons came. Regardless the diversity among us, regardless the tribes and all that different languages, yet we are one. Language was never barrier between us. Diversity or how we look or where we live was never problem among us because we know yeah you 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 you, you know you, you you migrated or you went somewhere that's why maybe you can speak somehow but in that your language no matter how you speak it you can still see the connection that we have in there just as the blob because the africa in me loves the africa or care about the africa in you and that is it so africa we are africans Akebulans, 
Some say we are more, so I know that. So we, we have been called many things. And um, the Europeans call us also many things and all that, but the main thing is that we are Africans, black people, darkness, that thick darkness, where you see God, that thick darkness that covers the earth. There can never be blackout. Anyone that tell you there's blackout is lying. Darkness can never be out. Darkness covers everything. Light comes out of darkness. All right? No way. So, let's go. Our land. We lost our land when the invaders came. They came as friends and they end up being our enemies. Until today, they are our enemies. They are doing everything against us. They are working against us, although they smile at our face. And many of us have been brainwashed to believe them, to accept them. And you see our professors, you see our leaders, you know, depending on them as, you know, their God. Of course, that's why they give them the God they worship. That's why they give them the, the Lord they worship. God, Jehovah, Allah, Yahweh, and the Jesus Christ, they worship. So the invaders came. Our ancestors weren't consulting any God to build anything. They had what is what was called African science, African knowledge, not African spirituality, not African religion, African science. Nobody can build anything with spirituality. Nobody can build anything with religion. Anything, any structure you must build in this world, whether it's road, whether it's land, uh, houses or whatever it is you want to build in this world, you build it with science, knowledge. You have to know what you are building, which is why they, they gave the word math mathematics. You cannot build anything without mathematics. You cannot go to the moon without mathematics. You cannot do any, build anything for quality living without mathematics. Okay. Uh, Rush, I will check your message and I didn't pick the call because I'm into this already before all that, okay? So when I'm done, I will check it. So join me here. If there is anything you wanna share, especially when it comes to factual truth, feel free to share with us. Uh, if they allow you to join me live, I can also invite you if you request for that, if I see it, you know, you can come on and say what you're saying. So for you to understand, especially those of you that have Bible knowledge or those of you that say you believe somehow in Bible, I want to show you, you know, about the invaders, how they invaded our land, two, place, two places in the, in the Bible, Genesis chapter 11 and the Judges chapter 18. I want to show you these two places for you to understand what really happened to our ancestors how they began and I mean, how they began to build. And these people came and brought their evil, evil, which is confusion, evil, which is separation, division, evil, which is destruction of a people united and living in peace. Genesis 11, one, he said, now the whole earth, remember when you go to the Genesis chapter one, he said that the earth, you know, darkness was upon, I mean, darkness was everywhere in the earth. Darkness was upon the face of the earth. Then he said the whole earth was had one language and one speech, you know. <laughs> and it came to pass as they journeyed from east, you know, east. They always tell you the wise men from the east, right? From east, wisdom. So the fear of God is not beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is beginning of, the, I mean, the, 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 the fear of God is beginning of bondage, beginning of confusion, beginning of destruction. The people, wisdom comes from people, people doing things they, they know, you know, sometimes they try to, many times before they get to how to know it, and they grow up having that wisdom, insight. They can tell you, this is what you will do, we will, and you do it, it works. That's wisdom. It's not a gift of any God. That they found a plain in the land of Shina and they dwelt there. But remember, they can't give you date because it's a lie. It's a story they put there, but they stole it from, or they, they, they formed it from what they actually did to people or what they learned from people. They made it up or what they stole 
from people. Then they said to one another, they did not say to any God, they did not say to any devil, they said to one another, people speaking to one another. That's how we're supposed to believe in, not believing in any God or waiting on any God to come and give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, or to help us. We don't need, we have every potential we need, both in us and in our land to build whatever we want to build in this world. He said, come, let us make bricks. Let us make gods, make gods and goddesses make. Remember, they did not separate themselves, said, okay, men, come here, let us be. They said to one another, both men and women, come, let us build whatever idea you have, bring, whether you are a man or woman. Our ancestors never put women under men, no. Although they were even marrying multiple wives, yet they never put any woman under a, under the man. All of them, both of them were equal, living their life, play, play, uh, playing their roles in their families. So let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. That they had they had bricks for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come again, let us build ourselves a city. It is not inspiration of God. No, this all is inspiration of man. Man thinking, okay, you look around, we can do this. We begin to do it. So he said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Is their story. But understand that these people we are building without consulting God and without the help of God. They have all it takes to build. They can mix something and turn it into stone if stone is needed. That's how they build. Verse 5, he said, but the Lord came down. The evil one came down. Came down from their mountain. They, they, they came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Sons of God cannot build anything. It's sons of men that build. You can see whatever you are using today. There is no son of God that has built it. It's built it. It's always sons of men, human beings, building things for quality living. He said, and the Lord said to his fellow wicked people, indeed, the people, these African people, these black people are one, and they all have one language because they cannot understand their language. They think all of them have one language, but never. And this is what they begin to do. They begin to do it. They did not wait upon the Lord to do it. They said that their own time, they, they weren't even worried about time, right? According to this story. He said, now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, enemy of progress. The Lord, God Almighty, is the enemy of progress. The white supremacy, the, the, the people that created the meat, white supremacy, because they are weak. Our ancestors were greater and mightier than them, wiser than them. They say, no, we are going to confuse these people. They did not go confronting them in, in war. No, they first confused the people to stop them from building, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad and they are, and they are over the face of all the earth and they cease building the city. That's, that's what made God enemy of progress. He came and stopped the people. That's when I say God, I'm talking about the Arabs and the Europeans, those enemies, those demons that invaded Africa and confused them. You know, then when they confuse them, they invade their land. As somebody said, you know, they give them the book and take their land. Until today, you see Africans clinging onto that book. Oh, this is the book of life. My life depends on it. How about your land? Don't worry about that. I am going to heaven. My blessings in heaven. God will bless me in heaven. So why is why are you suffering on earth? You 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 are holding a Bible. You are holding a Quran. You are holding a Torah as your manual for life. Some people say Bible is basic instruction. Instruction, basic instruction before leaving earth. 
You know, they make a, we have basic instruction before leaving earth. All that nonsense, they made it up. And to them, it would be, be so wonderful. It's the Holy Spirit that made it up like that. That's why, come on, no. The Bible is bullshit. Okay, Quran is bullshit. Torah is bullshit. So this is how they invaded our ancestors. We are building their cities and their towers, right? Making them for themselves. You can see their names everywhere. You see their names when they make the pyramids. You see their names when they made this, the strings. You see their names with the structures they made and why people went around trying to destroy them, but they cannot destroy everything like that. So that's how they came to confuse our ancestors and scatter them. Yeah, they, after confusion, how did they scatter them? They use weapons when they come to war. You know, they come with weapons. Our ancestors had weapons for hunting animals, not weapons for killing another human being or going to war. They had no army because they were living as civilized people. Civilized people don't need army because civilized people are not corrupt. Everywhere you see corruption, those people are not uh, are not civilized. Civilized people don't are not corrupt. The civilized people don't do evil people to another people. Civilized people don't go invading other people's land, raping their women, molesting their men, and killing their uh, them. Civilized people don't do that. So actually, what you call Western civilization is evil civilization, is destruction. It did not bring any life. It did not bring any death. It brought evil and destruction. That's what they brought to our land when they invaded us. Then the second place is Judges chapter 18. Judges chapter 18, seven to 10. You know, it's many, so let me just cut it from seven to 10. He said, so the five men departed, the five men, that's the Arabs, he represent Arabs and the Europeans, but especially the white men. The white men departed and went to Laish land of Africa, they saw the people who were there. Now they will tell you they discovered the people. As they said, Mongo Park discovered River Niger. Um, Christopher Columbus discovered America, all lies. They lied to us. Remember all the education we have, these white people give to us, is to brainwash us, not to educate us. They are not educating us. They brainwash us and keep brainwashing us. I've, I've been saying that to my daughter, you are just going to school so that you can get a job. But my duty, I will make sure I will keep teaching her about Africa, about how these people lie to us, how they destroy us, and she's catching up. And I'm happier for that. They saw the people who were living there, how they dwelt safely in the manner of the Sidonians, quiet and secure, they weren't competing with anyone. They weren't worried with anything. They were with anything outside them. They were living their life quiet and secure. There was no ruler in the land who might put them to shame for anything. That's this, this is what we need as a people. We don't need any ruler who we who 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 may put us to shame for anything. We need people that we say, oh, you are, okay, go and represent us there. And the person will go as our servant and come and tell us, okay, this is how it happened. That's it. All this having kings. King is not African stuff. King and queen, uh, they're living better than other people. No, every man, every woman is king and queen. Not one person being you know, no. Everyone is God and goddess. Not one God being over others, no. It's not the way of our ancestors. Although many of you will still argue because you have been brainwashed in their institution of learning. There were no rulers in the land who might put them to shame for anything. They were far from the Sidonians and they had no ties with anyone. They had no ties. They don't worry about how you live, live your life, I live my life. And that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, you are white. Okay, stay there. We don't bother you. Okay, we are here. Leave us, okay? Enjoy your life. Then the spies, white men, came back to their brethren at Zora and Esther. And their brethren said to them, what is your report? So they said, arise, let us go up against them. People that have not harmed you, people that have, that have not planned any, any battle against you, they are not at war with you, but you now made up your mind. You say, arise, let us go up against them. For we have seen the land, the land, the land. 
and indeed it is very good african land very good yesterday today and tomorrow he said will you do nothing do not hesitate to go and enter to possess the land verse 10 then i mean when you go you will come to a secure people and a large land for god has given it into your hands a place where there is no lack of anything that is on the earth africa That's why they, they came. They spied the land of Africa. They came as merchants. They came as guests. They came as innocent people. They came as human beings. But they were spies, evil, demons to destroy. Before you say God give any people any land, why can't their God create a land for them? The place you call me do is today is land of Africa. These demons came and took it. That's what I just read for you in Genesis chapter 11, 1 to 9, and Judges chapter 18, 7 to 10. You can read it yourself. Their God cannot create a land for them, but invaded, killed, stole, and destroyed, and occupied other people's land. It's right there in Genesis in the, in the Deuteronomy chapter 7. Tell you that the nations that are greater and mightier, the seven nations, that's they were perfect. Seven is number for what? Perfection. He was talking about perfect people, people that were secured, people that were prosperous. There's no need for any 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 leader, you know, uh, uh, walking around like majestically. Others will be buying your yeah, majesty. That's bullshit. They have no need of any good thing in the world. Everything they need is, and it, 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 it today, the land of Africa have everything Africans need to rebuild Africans. Wake up, I mean, to re rebuild Africa. Africans, wake up. See, I have shown you that, right? For you to see how they invaded and they took our land. When you look at the Middle East, uh, when you look at Egypt and all that, those areas, you see all those Abinos. They are not real Africans. They are not the real owners of those lands. Those land belongs to us. Middle East is our land. Saudi Arabia, all that is our land. They stole it. And when you Google or when you do your own research, you can find the years they were created, they were formed. All right. And today, Many of us don't know that. You see our people saying, I'm going to Israel for pilgrimage. I'm going to Mecca for pilgrimage. Fools, that's your land. Can't you think these three Abrahamic religions, three of them, they have every all their major things in this in, in just that small area. For you to see, they, they you know they store the land and they you know, occupy the land. That's where the, the, the Christians have their um, is it, the, is it the Church of Sepulchre or whatever they call it? And the Muslims have their, um, their Doom of the Rock and the Jews have their Willing Wall. These three Abrahamic religions that have been destroying the earth, destroying black people, that's, and you see black people going there. Yeah, I'm going to worship that white God. I went to see that white God. They took your land and you, I think you are going to get it back by praying. To the same God, they said they took that land in the name of God. They call it land flowing with milk and honey, your land. They call it the land that God gave to them. And they are fighting and killing people for that. Then that's our land, how they invaded and they took over our land. Till today, they are the ones still controlling our land. Okay? So, if, so for, those, for those of you that think that slavery or colonization, uh, colonialism has ended you are joking it's still intact in, in and you can see today how africans are suffering despite all the things they are feeding the world with the uh, the asians the, uh, the the europeans the americans all of them going to africa the africa is the is the one feeding them and they keep raping mama africa no condition is permanent so let me talk about our life how they mess up our life. I'll show you how they mess up our land. Now our life, how they mess it up. They mess up our life through the missionaries. When I'm talking about missionaries, those that brought Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, 
So the missionaries are called the missionaries because they come with a mission. Their mission is to mentally enslave Africans, okay? To teach them Christianity, teach them Islam, teach them uh, Judaism, because those religions were put in place to keep Africans divided. They know that the strength, the power, the black power is in unity. When black people united or unite, you will see that they cannot be stopped. They can build their cities and towers and nothing can stop them. No power can stop them, but they want to keep them divided. So they force these Abrahamic religions on them. So that's why I said in Matthew chapter 23, I will show you also two places in the New Testament to show you how they mess up our life through the missionaries. Matthew 23, verse 15, say, what to you scribes and, and the Pharisees, that's white people, Arabs and the Europeans, what to Arabs and the Europeans, hypocrites, for your travel land and the sea to win one proselyte, to win Africans, to win one people, people that are one, they came to win. I said, and when, and when he is one, they won, right? They won through their missionaries, through their teachings. They won Africans. They forced them. If you don't accept it, you will die. Okay, they accept it. So they won them. Say so you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. That one that created hell, so they are sons of hell. And that one that forced Africans to become children of hell when they say they are Christians, children of hell, when they say they are Muslims, children of hell, when they say they are Jews. They did that to us. That's how they mess up our life. They converted Africans from human beings to children of hell. Today they tell you Africans are doing this, Africans are doing that. Every button or everything you hear that Africans are doing, the white people are the one that force that evil on them. It was not in their land before. It was not among them. They were living their life quiet and secure, having everything they need, having no 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 ruler, no ruler over them to to you know to put them to shame. No, they were living their life as a people, civilized people. Right. So that is Matthew 23 15. Let me show you another place how they mess up our life. John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. He said, and it truly, according to their book, not according to fact, truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. May they tell you that all the answers to your question is in this book, but there are many things that Jesus did that was not written here. Then he said, but these are written. This Bible, Quran, and Torah are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. Although he was not the Christ, but now they want you to believe that this Jesus is the Christ. Although there were about 15 resurrected Christ or 15 Messiahs, resurrected Messiahs before him. But they say now, this book, Book of, of, of Quran, book of Torah, book of Bible are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. You have your own life, but you have to give it up. That's what they did to us. Now they made our people to abandon their own life for the life of Jesus having life in Jesus' name that never existed. Jesus that never existed. Jesus can, they, they have not seen or can see. That is how they mess up our life. They gave us a book after the mission, they sent the missionaries with the book and after the missionaries converted our people and made them children of hell instead of sons of men that they were. They gave them the book 
that they may believe that Jesus, whom they met up in AD 325 at the Council of Nicaea, and telling you this Jesus is the Christ and also the Son of God, also God, that in believing you may have life in his name. No longer have life as human beings. You were having life before they came as spies. You were having life before they invaded. You were having life before they st stole, killed, and destroyed. But now they tell you, now this is the Christ. You have to believe this Christ for you to have life. If you don't believe Christ, you will die. If you don't believe Muhammad, you will die. If you don't believe Jehovah or Yahweh, you will die. And today, the same bullshit is happening. And you, my, uh, my, my African brethren who are Christians, that know that I used to be a Christian, but today I'm no longer a Christian. Today I'm no longer preaching God in, in lies and Jesus in lies. I am preaching God in truth and Jesus in truth, just as they are showing you that they are man-made. Now you get upset saying you don't know what, what has happened to me. You are, you, you, you are wishing me that God will come and do something and bring me back or, or something. You see me as devil or something. Can't you think? What of those who are Muslims? They believe in God also. Like you believe. They believe there is hell also. Like you believe. But both of you are, don't agree that you are worshipping the same God. Some of, both of you don't have the same hell. You will go to their hell. They will go to your hell. Can't you think? You are against me for telling you that this God you worship is useless, is dead. It cannot help you. Your life is evidence of what I'm saying. God cannot do anything for you. You are the one that can do anything for you or your fellow human being. You get upset calling me names and saying all manner of nonsense. You can't think. They took your land and made it Middle East. No middle west, no middle south, no middle north, but there's middle east. Then they took your life and gave you the life of Judaism, life of Christianity, and life of Islam. Look at your life today. You have no place among men as a people. Why? Because they have taken your land and taken your life. When you don't have land, you don't have life. Look at the African Americans in America today as an example. They can be rich all they want, but they don't own land in America. They don't have land. The white men have the land. Then look at the Africans today. They, they, they are living in their land, but who rules them in their land? They have leaders who are putting them to shame, even in their own land. A, leaders that, that, that is enriching themselves, looting their treasuries, use, you know, selling their resources, and keeping the people poor, people are ashamed. Africans are ashamed to stand among other people. That's why they do everything possible to make money because they think money at least will give them some leverage. But even in their own land, they are ashamed when they don't have money. Wake up, my people. Middle East is a misdemeanor. Judaism, Christianity, Islam, they are meat. We have to retake our land. We have to retake our life. We have to live again as a people, speaking our language, bearing our name, making ourselves name, building our cities and our towers. We don't need their help. They are the one that need us. So we're supposed to be in charge, not them being in charge. Somebody should not come to your store and run things. Somebody should not come to your yard and run things. You're supposed to be in charge, both in your store and in your yard. They are strangers over our land. They are strangers who have taken over, who are in our land, controlling our lives. Through the political leaders and religious leaders we have. Many of you don't know. White men are not controlling you directly. They are controlling you through your politicians and religious leaders. 
as I speak, yes, it's still happening. And you cannot stop it until you rise up as a people unite and say enough is enough. We need our leaders that will not put us to shame anymore, but that we do our bidding. Not our leader that have to travel to London to see any idiot there, or have to travel to America to see any idiot there, but our leaders who will remain in our land and do what we ask them to do. Strangers are in charge of our land and they're controlling our lives through religious and the political leaders. The question is this, can we fight, overcome, and expel those strangers from our land? The answer is yes, we can, and we will. And that's why people like myself are calling you to wake up. How can you fight when you are asleep? You cannot. People that are sleeping does not fight. That's why you see the invaders or the people that comes to kill, they go in the night. They know those that are sleeping, they, no, ma no matter the equipment they have, they, you, you just, you know, ambush them. While they are sleeping, you kill them. And Africans are sleeping. Majority of Africans are sleeping. We need the majority of Africans to wake up, begin to occupy the places of power in politics, and in everything that concerns us as a people, so they will put to an end this Abrahamic evil religions and begin to, 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 to devise how we can, I mean, begin to make plans how we can take back what rightfully belongs to us. When can we fight, overcome, and expel the strangers out of our land when we unify? and well equipped we need to unify ourselves and well equipped equipped with the weapons and equipped with african power or black power how we have to know our ascensor or our sensory natural powers as a people without without hierarchy without spirituality and without religion. Many of us don't care to know that because they have taught us away from it. They tell you it's evil. They tell you it's demonic. They tell you you, you, you suffer when you, when, you, when you engage it. No, you will not suffer. What your ancestors use will, will never harm you if you have knowledge of it. It's when you don't have knowledge of what you are using that it will harm you. But if you have knowledge of it, it will not harm you. We must get knowledge of it and learn how to use it again. Yes, I saw it. Listen, they separated us from that power. They did not kill that power. That power is there. The only way we can restore that power is by uniting ourselves. When we unite ourselves, you will see that unity. We begin to know you. This one have done already. This one we bring it. We we form that power again that they cannot withstand us. That which they begin to do, nothing will refrain from from them. Nothing will stop them. That which they propose to do, that which they propound to do, nothing will stop them. Black people, when united, it starts with you. It starts with you. Have you decided to remove spirituality out of your life? Have you decided to remove religion out of your life? Let me say it again. Spirituality costs us our land. When our ancestors were operating in knowledge, science, they were building great things, inventing great things. But when majority of them switch to spirituality, begin to worry about afterlife, we are in other rituals and all that. White men came and took advantage of that. Spirituality cost us our land. It is that spirituality that made them offer hospitality to people that came to spy and kill them. Instead of them saying, come on, get out from here. This is how we do it. If you don't do it, no, you're not coming. <laughs> 
and religion cost us our life. And both of them as belief system. So whether you call it African spirituality or you call it foreign religion, both of them are belief system. They're based on meat. They are not based on facts. They are based on, I believe my ancestors is somewhere watching me. I pray to my ancestors. You are stupid. Why are you praying to the dead? And you also believe in reincarnation. You say you and your ancestors are one. Then what are you praying to? Just as they lied to you in the Bible, telling you that Jesus and God are one. And here Jesus is praying, Father, for, uh, please, Father, Father, do this. Father, that's bullshit. If you and your father are one, you don't need to pray to your father. Because he said you are one, then you do whatever. And when your father is dead, but you are alive, why are you praying to the dead? It does, it does what spirituality has made us. And you still see majority of Africans saying, yeah, it done, it's working. You know, our ancestors, we did it. Our ancestors, we bless, no ancestors will bless you. No God will bless you. You are the one that will bless you. Because some of you think, oh, these guys are against religion. It's for African spirituality. And you run quick. Oh, you no, you don't know me. You understand me first. I said I, I am not for I, I am not African spiritualist and I am not religious. But as Africans, I'm not talking to myself. I can never embrace African spirituality or any religion. I don't need any belief system. All I need is knowledge, science. So, but as Africans, you that still want to believe something, you that are still looking for something to worship or what something to pray to, then embrace African spirituality. That's what is yours. You are it, what, the people that do know their God. They say shall, they shall be strong and do exploits, right? Okay, where is the strong? Where where is the strength? Where is the exploits you are doing with your African spirituality? You that say now, okay, you are traditionalist. You are following the ways of your ancestors in spirituality. That what can that, can that build the road? No. Can that build the house? No. You end up fooling yourselves with this. this. I do this. You know, somebody do this. But what people are still holding your your uh, your, 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 your 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 things in their museum, museum or whatever they call it, you still see them. Holding all your your, your 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 statues and all that, and they're making money of of them, but you're there saying, yeah, my ancestors. This uh, there is this God. They're doing what? What is that God doing? What is that your spring being doing? What is it doing to help your people? You say no, people reject them. People reject them because they're useless. If they're active, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. People will not reject them. You see how people reject poor, poor person, but they don't reject rich man because they know rich man have money to throw around. Poor man, they say even, even his people, his friend will run away from him. Poor man. Because when you need something, you don't think about your poor friend or poor family member. You think of who is rich, who is rich. That's what you think. African spirituality costs us our land and religion, foreign religion costs us our life. No condition is permanent. Our hope and help for recovery is science. That is knowledge. African ancient science, the same science that built the great pyramids and the great things that today, white men and black, none of them know how our ancestors built those things. They say it's a mystery. It's not a mystery. It's a mystery because we don't know. What you call mystery is what you don't know. In modern words, ignorance is mystery. They use the science to build those pyramids, those things. They invented many things. Many things you are enjoying in the world today were invented by our half ancient African ancestors. We can take it back. We can take back our land. We can take back our life. But the only way we can do that, our hope and the help for recovery is science, not spirituality, not religion. It is time you grow up as an African to embrace science. One plus one is two. It can never be one. Stop deluding yourself 
by faith and beliefs. Trust them and live your life as human beings, as songs of men and women. Songs of men and women, human beings, not spiritual beings, not religious beings. It is time you wake up and know that you have what it takes in your life, in your land, to recover all that was stolen or taken from you. No condition is permanent. I know you can do it, Africans, and you will. Peace.